Hey guys, Miguel of First Drive, and today I'm going to show you how to properly assemble your First Drive police SUV using the included detail of instruction. Now, first and foremost, you want to take a look at page one, where you have a complete breakdown of all the hardware and parts that come with the vehicle that are absolutely needed to properly assemble the vehicle. Here are some of the parts that make up the SUV. These are your front wheels, these are your rear wheels. The way to distinguish the front from the back is you will see that the rear wheels have a hub on it which connects to the motor, which you'll see later on in the installation. The front wheels do not have anything on the back of the wheel. You have your steering wheel, your mirrors, your simulated wheel covers, your push bar, your seat, your shifter assembly. Over here, we have our back window assembly, our side window assemblies, our windshield, our side skid pad, and the two motors for the back wheels, which are labeled right and left. First and foremost, you want to make sure your vehicle is working properly. So before we assemble it, you want to take the power wire, simply connect it to the black box, and start the vehicle. As you can see, the vehicle is properly starting and functioning. Now, the first part that we're going to install as per the instruction manual is the push bar. This is located at the front of the vehicle and it uses four of the included screws. Now you'll notice there's a small plug on the back of the push bar. You want to connect that to the plug that's coming out of the front of the vehicle as such. and attach it from the back with the included screws. The process is repeated on the other side. Now you might want to be tempted to use a power tool such as a drill, but I want to remind you that some of these plastics on these vehicles are pretty soft and can break if too much pressure is applied. So a power tool like a drill might be a little bit too much. So just use a hand screwdriver and you'll be fine. Next, we're gonna move on to the lower side skid pads. For that, we wanna turn the vehicle on its back. It pads are installed with seven different screws. So you want to locate the one that goes to the side you're assembling. You'll know it's correct because all the screw holes will align as such. You have these three up top, and you'll have four more inside towards the bottom. And again, the process is repeated on the other side. So make sure your holes line up. Once you're satisfied, Grab your screws. And 
that completes the skid pad installation. Next, we are going to install the wheel assemblies. For that, you will want to place the vehicle upside down. For this part of the assembly, we're going to use the provided plastic wheel wrenches. Let's grab a left and right wheel motors. I want one wrench on one side, the other one on the other side, simply loosen up the nuts and the washers. And you want to do the same thing on the other side. Now, we're going to grab a rear wheel assembly with the hub on it. We're going to locate the right hand wheel motor. Simply what you want to do is slide the assembly into the axle rod. At the same time, you want to take this plug and just route it through the hole on the side of the body as such. Next, you want to take the wheel assembly. See the shape of the hub matches the shape of the motor. You want to make sure it falls right in there. Take the same washer, the same nut, Place it on here. And for now, we'll just hand tighten till we can get the other side assembled. Again, left hand motor. Repeat the process. You want to slide the motor to the axle rod and route the harness through the body hole. You want to make sure the motor falls in the same hole where the wiring is going in. Nice and flush. Grab our other wheel, hub, match the motor, slide it on there, take your washer, take your nut. Now, want to grab both plastic wrenches, one on each side, and tighten both simultaneously. That completes the rear wheel assembly. Again, you want to grab the provided plastic wrench, remove the nut. You have two washers. You want to keep one on there so it sits behind the wheel. Grab your wheel assembly, simply slide it on. Grab the other washer. Install the nut. Simply tighten it. Now you don't want to tighten it all the way down because you want to make sure that the wheel spins freely as such. So we have a good fit right there. It's a locking nut, it's not going anywhere. And the process is repeated on the other side. Now we want to turn our attention to the steering wheel. The steering wheel has a screw that goes across that secures the steering wheel in place. It may be with the rest of the screws, sometimes it may be actually attached to the steering wheel itself. If it is attached to the steering wheel, simply remove the screw. Just make sure you don't lose the nut that's on the other side. 
slide it out. So, now, if you look at the steering wheel, you'll notice that the side with the nut has the same shape as the nut itself. That's to secure the nut in place. While the other side is round, and that tells you that's where the screw goes in. So, before that, you wanna take the plug that's coming out of the steering wheel and connect it to the wiring harness that's coming out of the column itself. See if we connect them, you hear it click, it's secured. Now you simply place the steering wheel and what you want to do is just make sure that the holes for the steering wheel are matching the steering wheel shaft itself. Now, put the nut back in its spot. Screw from the other side. And simply tighten it and the nut will hold itself in place. And that concludes the steering wheel installation. Now we want to turn our attention to the windshield. Now with the windshield, if you notice, there's a small harness coming out the right side near the door. That connects to the windshield itself, which operates the police lights up top. So what you want to do is Connect that harness, and you hit a click, you're good to go. You want to route it back into the spot. Position the windshield. And line up all the tabs and simply push down. Once all the tabs are located, you push your windshield down. We're good to go, and that concludes the windshield installation. Next, we want to turn our attention to side windows. You want to locate your left and right. Simply open the door. And you want to slide in. There are one, two, three, four, five screw holes that secure the window frame to the actual door. I'm gonna grab five of your thinner screws, simply slide them in, and tighten them down. So again, one, two, three, four, five. And that concludes the left door. Process is repeated for the right side. Once your five screws are in, you've completed the door assembly portion of this video. Next, we have our side view mirrors. Simply locate the proper side, and once you hear the snap, you're good to go. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the rear window assembly. Rear window assembly has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 tabs, 12 tabs, fall right into the 12 slots located on the body of the vehicle. Make sure you have them all lined up. Open your doors to make it a little bit easier. Once you see that all tabs are lined up, give it a firm push down. And the assembly simply locks in place, and that completes back window installation. Next, we're gonna focus on the seat installation. Before anything, 
we want to connect our motors for the wheels. Simply locate the harness that you routed through the whole of the body. And connect them to the plugs as such. And we are good to go. Remove the Phillips head screw that's attached to the body that holds the seat down. Put it off to the side. And what you want to do is, you want to slide these two tabs of the seat into two notches on the body, as such. Once you find the notches, simply slide the seat down, grab the screw that you just removed, and make sure the hole in the seat lines up with the hole in the body, and simply Put the screw back in its place, as such. Make sure it's nice and sturdy. That completes the seat assembly. Now here we have our shifter assembly, which includes the shifter itself, the top of the handle, and the decal showing the shift pattern. We want to take the actual shifter, locate the screw, and what you want to do is locate the shaft where the shifter connects. Basically, slide it on there, take your screw, and connect it from the base of the shifter handle as such. Okay. As you can see, there's a small hole here. What that is for is for the top of our shift knob. Simply slide the screw in. Line it up with the hole. And tighten it down. The final portion of the shifter assembly is removing the decal from the backing paper. Just line it up nice and straight right on the shifter handle. And that concludes the shift of assembly. Finally, we want to focus our attention on the wheel covers. The wheel covers themselves have four tabs. The wheel itself has four notches. Basically, we just want to line up the tabs with the notches and just slide them in. You'll hear them snap, that's how you know they're nice and secure. Again, four tabs, four notches. Locate the notches, slide the wheel covers on. And again, the process is repeated on the other side. That concludes the actual assembly of the vehicle. Finally, we're gonna learn how to pair the remote to the vehicle so the parents can have control of the vehicle when the child is not using it manually with the foot pedal. Basically, you're gonna to need to install two AAA batteries in the back that are not included. You wanna turn the vehicle on, and after it's on, you wanna push down on the forward and back button simultaneously until you see the lights in the middle blinking. When the lights in the middle stop blinking, your vehicle is paired. As you can see, the lights have stopped blinking, and now the vehicle is responding to the remote. This concludes our assembly video for the police SUV first drive vehicle. We hope this video has been informative and helpful and we thank you for watching.